Well, it is primary day in a handful of states today, including in Ohio and Illinois, where potentially pivotal Senate and House races will unfold. But there's also a special election in California to help decide who will serve out the remainder of former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's term. He left the chamber at the end of last year, shrinking what was already a slim Republican majority in the House. Many of the same candidates who ran in the primary election just two weeks ago for a full term as California's 20th district representative are on the ballot again today. The top three vote getters who you see on your screen again poised for a good showing. So joining me now, Rena Shaw, political strategist and former senior aide to two Republican lawmakers. Rena, thank you so much for your time. Uh, nice. Well, let's let's kind of dig into this. Today's primary is to complete the rest of McCarthy's term. This is not for the full term, which will start next January. So talk about the important difference and what it could mean for Congress going forward in both the short and the long term. Well, let's not forget that Congress uh, is, is in one of those places right now that is looking really unusual. As time has gone on, the, there's been a razor thin majority that the Republicans have held here. It's very, very alarming. 219 seats is what they've got right now. And let's not forget there are three vacancies. But now looking at this seat, which is unoccupied because the former Speaker of the House left at the end of last year. This is Kevin McCarthy. We're talking about who held California's 20th Congressional District. One of the most reliably read seats in California, one of the very few, I must add, and he held that seat since 2007. Now, today, we see nine people on the ballot uh, for, for this seat, and, and they are of differing parties. But when looking at the Republicans, it's really down to Vince Fong and another guy, with the last name Bordeaux. But the two differences between Fong and Bordeaux are essentially that Fong has been given the endorsement not only by McCarthy, but also by Trump. Mm -hmm. And then you look at Bordeaux, and he's got a lot of the, the backing of the locally uh, local county leaders, the local Republican clubs. And it kind of still signals to you that maybe there are still fractures that are local within this Republican Party. Now, Kevin McCarthy did beat Marissa Wood uh, most recently very reliably by I think something like 24 percentage points. And let's not forget that Trump has also won this seat in 2020. Uh, he's won that district, excuse right. me, by something like 25 percentage points. And so this is an interesting race to watch. But if nobody gets more than 50 percent today, they will proceed. The top two candidates that get the most votes will move on to a May, I believe it's May 21st, runoff election. You know, and Rita, you are a strategist. I want to talk turnout here because since we know the top yeah. of the ticket is, is essentially set, does it mean voters will likely stay home? I mean, not only in California, but other other states where we're seeing these primaries. Well, for the circumstances I just laid out, you know, what we really don't know is how enthusiastic are people to turn out and vote for Vince Fong, again, who holds the endorsement of the current standard bearer of the Republican Party, which is still very much former President Donald Trump. Now, we know McCarthy, though he got the boot from his colleagues in Washington, was well liked in the district and again, handily beat the Democrat opponent uh, with more votes the last time he ran for office than the time even before. So there's a sense here that, again, Again, you have a reliably red population that is going to turn out, but how many? And we're, if we look at the indication of the race between uh, Trump and Haley until she dropped out, you can even maybe look to that a little bit more because California is a state that is changing. I, I even look to Kentucky, where reliably red counties went blue for Bashir, the Democrat governor. So this is an anything can happen race, but I don't expect great turnout this time around. Folks have already been a little bit exhausted. They already came out on March 5th for another election right. for the same thing. So it's getting a little bit confusing. But one thing is for sure, we can tend to get a little bit of a takeaway of Trump's down ballot effect on this race. You know, thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.